where do I go? When there's no one else to turn to, who do I talk to? When no one wants to listen, who do I lean on? Oh, oh. When there's no foundation stable, I go to the rock. I know he is able, I can go to the rock. I can go to the rock of my salvation. I go to the stone that the builders rejected. I run to the mountain, and the mountain stands.
Hello everyone! I don't know if any of you have ever gone fishing, but if you have, then you will know a little bit about what we are talking about today. Fishing is so fun! I have a true story about when Jesus met some fishermen. We begin with two fishermen named Peter and Andrew. Instead of using a fishing pole like the one you probably use if you've ever gone fishing, Peter and Andrew used a big net to go fishing. Everyone, pretend to throw your nets. Ready? One, two, three, throw your nets. Now let's pull our nets. Pull, pull, one more time. Pull, we did it. We went fishing just like the fishermen did. Nice jobs, friends. So Peter and Andrew were fishing when all of a sudden Jesus came walking by. They had seen Jesus do amazing things. They knew he was a really special leader. And then Jesus said, come follow me. We will look for people instead of fish. What? Jesus, the most special leader of all time, wanted the fishermen to come with him? Well, right away, Peter and Andrew left, their nets behind and followed Jesus. Then Jesus saw two more fishermen, James and John. They were fishing with their dad, and Jesus said, come follow me. Right away, they got out of their boat and followed Jesus because they knew he was a really special leader. These fishermen, Peter, Andrew, James, and John, became some of Jesus' best friends, called disciples. And you know what? Jesus wants you and me to come and follow him too. How cool is that? Jesus, God's son, wants us to follow him. So remember, just like Peter, Andrew, James, and John followed Jesus, I can follow Jesus too. Now let's pray. Father God, we just thank you for um, all the little ones that have joined us today watching this. And we ask you to just bless them and show them a way that they can follow you. In Jesus' powerful name, amen. Bye guys, see you next week. And remember, God loves you and so do I. Hi everyone, so happy that you are all joining me today. We're picking up God's big story today by looking at what happened with Jesus and a man named Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus was a short man. It actually says so in the Bible, in the book of Luke. Zacchaeus lived in the town of Jericho. But here's the thing, the people in the town weren't very fond of him. People didn't like him because he was dishonest. He stole from them. Zacchaeus was a chief tax collector, so he went around collecting money that people owed the Roman government. But part of the deal was that Zacchaeus got to take the extra money for himself. And the people knew this. Can you see why people didn't like him that much? To be honest, I don't know if I would have liked him that well either. One day, the people heard that Jesus was coming to town. They had heard so many amazing things about Jesus, and they wanted to see him for themselves. Well, Zacchaeus wanted to see Jesus too, but he wasn't tall enough to see over all the people. Can you guess what he did? Well, what would you do if you couldn't see over a crowd? Zacchaeus wanted to see who Jesus was, so he ran ahead of the crowds and climbed a sycamore fig tree. When Jesus walked by, he looked up at Zacchaeus. Let's see what he said in Luke 19.5. Zacchaeus, come down at once. I must stay at your house today. I'm sure the people in the town wondered about this. They probably figured that Jesus didn't know about all the terrible things Zacchaeus had done, but Jesus did know. He knew every wrong thing Zacchaeus had ever done, but he chose to look past all of that and invite himself to dinner. Listen to what Zacchaeus did. Luke 19, 6 says, Zacchaeus came down at once and welcomed him gladly. The people in the town began to whisper that Jesus had gone to be the guest of a sinner. They couldn't believe Jesus would choose to go and hang out with someone as bad as Zacchaeus. But clearly, something had changed in Zacchaeus. Luke 19.8 tells us he stood up and said to Jesus, Look, Lord, here and now I give half of what I owe to those who are poor. And if I cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay it back. I will pay back four times the amount I took. Whoa, did you hear that? Zacchaeus said he would give half of what he owned to the poor. He also said for anyone he had taken extra money from, he would pay them back four times the amount he had taken. That means if Zacchaeus took one dollar from someone, he would pay them back four dollars. That's pretty amazing. In Luke 19, 9 through 10, Jesus said, Zacchaeus, today salvation has come to your house. You are a member of Abraham's family line. The son of a man came to look for the lost and save them. Think about how amazing that day must have been for Zacchaeus. 
Jesus had chosen to forgive him. Jesus decided to show love to Zacchaeus instead of ignoring him or pointing out what he had done wrong. And because of Jesus' love, Zacchaeus changed. He became a completely new person on the inside. He wanted to pay back the people he had wronged. He wanted to make things right. There are lots of things we can change on the outside, but God is the one who can change us on the inside. We can show God's love to others when we choose to forgive them. And you never know what might happen when you do. God could change their hearts just like he did Zacchaeus's. When you forgive others, it can change them. Now, please pray with me. Father God, we just thank you for everyone that joined us today. And we ask you to bless them. And um, please help us to forgive. Father, show us the way that we can forgive. We just thank you and praise you in Jesus' powerful name. Amen. Thank you guys. See you next week. And remember, God loves you and so do I.